Start game now. They do what they want to do, say what they want to say, sing how they want to sing, play how they want to play, dance how they want to dance, and some other stuff too. They're the Adams Family. Welcome retro fans, this is the No Swear Gamer with Retro Reviews. Today, Blue Ghost and I, oh, did I scare you? Blue Ghost and I will be reviewing the Adams Family for your Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, this is actually the second Adams Family game on the Nintendo Entertainment System. The first being Fester's Quest by Sunsoft came about three years prior. This game is from 1992. It's based on the 1991 movie, hence the poster label there, of the same name, which itself was based on a TV show, which was based on a comic strip, All Made in America. And as this game proudly tells you, it is Made in Japan. Maybe next time, Made in Japan will appear on Mom, Baseball, and Apple Pie, the game. Made in Japan. i never seen Made in Japan so prominent on a label before. Anyways, developed by Ocean. Ocean for the Nintendo was kind of like LGN was, uh, especially early on, where they did a lot of licensed uh, garbage. I'm sorry, licensed games. Uh, Ocean dealt mostly with movies, especially on the Nintendo Entertainment System. So they would license the game, take the movie poster, put it on the label. So this label looks nice, but that's mostly Hollywood's fault, not Ocean's. They were kind of lazy with what they did there. This really tells you nothing about the game other than it's the Adams Family whatsoever. Nothing about the gameplay, but that's what Ocean would do. So um, why am I reviewing Adams Family first? Uh, is my first Nintendo Entertainment System game review here on Retro Reviews. Could it be that I had a fond childhood memory of this game? Maybe I was a big fan of the movie. Or maybe when I alphabetized my games, The Addams Family came first and I'm just going in order, at least for now. Uh, that one's probably it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pop this thing into my front loader NES and we're going to see if the Adams Family is as groovy as the song. So let's uh, go ahead, pop it in and check it out. In the Adams Family, you play Gomez, who in the movie was played by Raul Julia, who also appeared in Street Fighter the movie, which was based on a video game and got turned into a video game. So if you see Street Fighter the arcade game that's based on the movie, you will see another actor playing Raul Julia's actor, who is a character in a movie based on the game. So there's actually, let's see, uh, the, he was based on the character, but there was another guy hired to be act like him as a character in the arcade. No, well, okay, never mind. Anyways, you're Gomez in this game. And following kind of the movie's plot, uh, your, your mansion has been lost to Tully the lawyer, and he's also kidnapped everybody in your family, and your goal is to go into your home rescue everybody at the same time gathering a million dollars and all this cash and jewels laying around and finally find more Trisha and win the game uh, sounds easy and not really this is a very difficult game where do we begin well let's just look at the graphics to start with I kind of thought that this game reminded me a little bit of a platform version of maniac maniac mansion if you will and uh, one of it is kind of the art design, which isn't as good as Maniac Mansion. The other is the gameplay. You see, in The Addams Family, it's kind of a Metroid-style game. Uh, don't get too excited, though. Uh, where you go from one area to the other, gathering items in one area, that will help you unlock items in the next area and will help you continue to open up different rooms and find more items. However, uh, unlike Metroid, it's not that much fun. One of the reasons why is because of the control. The control in the game is is okay, but sometimes frustrating. Uh, I found myself as I was playing this game trying to emulate the original Super Mario Brothers, holding B to run and, and A to jump. A does jump in this game, but B does not. B is used primarily to go into doors. If you're at a door, or an entranceway of some sort and hit the B button. If you're allowed to go in, you will go in. It does lead for some frustrations because there's a few times where I accidentally hit B again and immediately it kicked me 
outside of the door. But A is jump. It is your primary weapon. Uh, like Mario Brothers, you can jump on top of most enemies' heads to uh, defeat your enemy. But unlike Mario Brothers, the collision is not always perfect and there's going to be times where you get frustrated jumping and trying to hit an enemy. One time you think you hit him spot on and you do. The next time you jump at him and you're actually getting hurt. That brings me to one nice thing that the Adams Family has going for it. Um, thankfully, they included a generous life bar. And you're going to need it because you're, you're going to get hit all the time. Now, the interesting thing about getting hit in the Adams Family is when your um, icon detects a collision, when your little guy there is touching something that hurts him, as long as he's touching it, his life bar is going to get drained. There were times in the game where I would hit something and kind of walk along with it. And it would continue to hurt me. So your best bet is when you get hit is just to let whatever hit you go by you and not move for a second so that it stops damaging you. Also, there's a section where there's all these platforms made of these floating bones. And now if you let the bones hit you, if you're just standing by them and they go through you, it'll actually hurt you. Now you can stand on them. That won't hurt you. But the bones actually going through you will hurt you. An incredible an incredible deal. Whoever heard of a platformer where the platforms hurt you? It does in the Adams Family. So anyways, you go from room to room. The game doesn't offer you a lot of help. It doesn't really hold your hand. The manual does give you a few hints here and there what to look for, but they're kind of vague. So there's a lot of trial and error. But the problem with this game is you get, a, you get like three lives and you get a continue, but after that, the game's over. There is no save. There is no password. There's nothing to, to kind of mark your progress. You have to start all the way at the beginning once you hit the end of the game and that's the most frustrating thing about the Adams family it's very unforgiving at times and very frustrating there's going to be cheap hits for instance in one room you go in the house and immediately a chandelier falls on your head so quickly that you barely have time to react unless you memorized it already you're going to hit, have cheap hits left and right so what should be a fun time exploring the game ends up being a very frustrating time I do think if they would have added a password or save a feature of some sort it would be great you see you make your way to the end of one room you find somebody your item and that's great it, it keeps that if you die you keep that item but now you have to make your way all the way back and that sometimes is incredibly hard to jump as I said I tried these Mario brother jumps to make these long jumps where I would dash and try and jump farther but that does not work in this game the jumps have to be pixel perfect at times and again if you fall down into a bottomless pit that's it doesn't matter how much life you have your life is over uh, hopefully you have another one in your pocket so that is the Adams family in a nutshell as I said the graphics remind me of maniac maniac mansion kind of the deformed heads you know the thin bodies actually I think Gomez the character kind of looks like something a grade schooler would have drawn if you look at the character he doesn't he, you can tell who he is but it looks like something where that was kind of scribbled on on the back of, of maybe a notebook somewhere or I'm sorry let's go retro on the back of the trapper keeper so yeah the graphics aren't too great some of the pictures of the family members are okay but you can kind of tell that they were just trying to get this game done with music wise eh, has the abs family theme which is classic and catchy but mm, uh, music music and sound effects really didn't do much for me this is a pretty family friendly game it is a lot uh, more family friendly than the movie and than the TV show you know sometimes they had some dark humor and uh, this game is a lot more kidified they have these ghosts that look very very childish there is some skeletons but there's nothing too scary in this game there is no blood so um, it is a darker setting so maybe some younger kids might get a little scared by some of the skeletons and whatnot but most kids are gonna laugh at this they're not gonna to find this offensive at all or scary at all so it is a family friendly game but on the whole I would have to say I'm gonna pass on the Adams family for the Nintendo just way too frustrating if you do want a copy you can find them on eBay loose copies are about eight to ten bucks a pop so it's a little 
uncommon compared to you know games like Super Mario or even tennis or golf a little bit uncommon probably because most people didn't even buy it in the first place but it's not that collectible you want a complete copy it's going to set you back about $20 uh, the Adams Family was released on some other platforms I know the Super Nintendo got a version that was a lot more colorful um, I'm going to assume that that one is funner but I've not played it yet it definitely looked better at least in this in the still shots but as far as Adams Family for the Nintendo Entertainment System yeah we're going to pass so let's see how we're going to rank this one um i would definitely put it above tax avoiders for the atari 2600 i can play this game a little bit there was some fun in it but you know what i'm going to put it below bubsy that's right uh adam's family is going to go below bubsy for the sega genesis uh I had to think about that one and you know what the tiebreaker was Bubsy gives you a password save system. You can actually, you know, if you Google it, you can find passwords for any levels. And as you play the games, it does give you passwords every three levels. In Bubsy, you can actually, uh, you know, go back to a level that you're trying to get. In Am's Family, if you get through, you know, like half the game and you lose all your lives, you have to start all over. And it wasn't fun getting halfway through to begin with. So, yeah, Am's Family, hey, you're better than tax avoiders. So anyways, thank you for checking out Retro Reviews with the No Swear Gamer. If you enjoy this, please like it. And if you like videos like this, why don't you go ahead and subscribe? It is free on YouTube. That's better than getting Game Pro. You'd have to pay for that. Do they still make Game Pro? I wonder. So this is the No Swear Gamer saying thanks for giving me a little part of your day. I will see you next time.